the Jcast Network. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. We had the opportunity to speak with Yonatan Nier, the writer and director of Dolphin Boy. Dolphin Boy is a film about an Arab boy who suffers a trauma after being beaten by kids in his community. He's brought to an Israeli psychologist who recommends dolphin therapy, a unique way to help traumatized individuals. Let's take a closer look. As a filmmaker and writer, um, whenever you start writing your your movie, you don't realize sometimes how it's going to come about. And whenever you're starting that process, it's uh, it's exciting and complicated, uh, as this is almost like your your child. Um, why do you decide to make this movie? Well, you know, you, you totally, I totally agree with you. Um, when you start to work on a documentary like this and. You have no idea how much time it will take. You need to find something that you feel connected to, in order to find the energy and you know the the the, the power to go through a lot of troubles that you can and you will have in the in the future. Um, and for me, Dolphin Boy, um, the reason for me to do this film was something very personal. Uh, I was uh, working as an underwater cameraman and as an underwater uh, uh, photographer and as a diving instructor for almost 10 years. And I knew the, uh, the amazing effect that uh, an encounter with dolphin, a whale, or one of those big uh, giant animals underwater, uh, the effect that it had on me was always really, really strong. It, it always felt, made me feel, you know, uh, very uh, strong feelings. And, uh, and emotions. Um, and then in 2006, I was um, back in Israel working as one of the underwater underwater cameramen and photographers of the Dolphin Reef in Elat. My job was to dive with dolphins five, six times a day, and it was great. It was amazing. And then one day, everything changed, and I was called to serve in the reserve forces of the IDF during the Second Lebanon War. And uh, the, the, this this was a very uh, uh, you know difficult time for me, and I was also wounded uh, from a landmine uh, one of the last ni nights of the war. But I w my injury was not bad at all. I physically, I was good after a week and a half, and I was good to go back to normal life. But when I went back to a lot after the war, uh, I could not go back to normal. I could not wake up in the morning. I didn't have the energy, I was down, I was depressed, um, and didn't want to go back to work. And then one of my best friends told me, listen man, you know, maybe you just should do what, what was doing so good to you in the, in the past. Maybe you should just go and dive again, go to swim with the dolphins. And this is exactly what I did. Uh, um, and when I entered the water, just from everywhere, all the dolphins came to me. And I had like six or seven dolphins around me, surrounding me. And I was diving with them for half an hour or 40 minutes. And uh, they didn't let me go. They were just around me and made me feel so good. And I was smiling for the first time since the war, since the war ended. And I decided that, that I just have to tell the story of this uh, inexplicable connection between men and dolphins and about how this connection can help people in troubles. And two months later, Murad, the protagonist of uh, Dolphin Boy, arrived to the Dolphin to the Dolphin Reef, and I knew right away that this is a story that I wanted to. And you know, this is a, a fantastic story, um, not only about how uh, you know a dolphin and a boy can connect, but you know, there's this Arab-Israeli connection, and throughout the film, you know, you, you don't get a sense of like the you know the politics. It's all about love. Um, can you talk a little bit about you know how how that came to be? Obviously, in a film like this, you have so much that is um, that is going on, and you have this over, you have this overarching average like conflict. But this is this is a very unique take on everything. I think um, 
me and, and my partners, uh, Danny Menkin and uh, Judith Menasa Ramon, which is the producer of this film, we realized from the very first moment that, um, you know, um, the Arab-Israeli issue is not the issue. The conflict is not the issue. Um, we um, could focus ourselves more on that issue, but then this story would be less universal. And we wanted to keep it universal because the trauma and a man that is trying to escape his trauma is a universal issue. It doesn't have to do anything with Israel or with uh, uh, Arabs or Muslims. It can happen anywhere in the world, and Murad could be any anybody, and he could be, uh, um, you know, had, he, he, he could experience trauma from a war, or from bullying, or from a car accident, or from rape, or from everything. It's it's a universal issue. Um, of course, the fact that Murad is Arab, Israeli, and his father is Muslim, and the psychiatrist, Doctor Ilan Kutz, that uh, treat him for no charge. Uh, for so many years, is Jewish, and the guys in the Dolphinry are Jewish, and then the friends of the father are Muslims, and they support him and love him like, you know, in a in a way that I admire, and all these things, you know, just you know, broke all the the bridges between people. I mean, in the end of the day, to me, if you don't need to deal with politics and you just leave the human beings. Uh, uh, and you try to, to, to deal directly with people, then you will find out that you have less troubles than you think in this world. Um, you know, and we didn't, we always said, we always said that uh, when Morad is jumping to the water, was jumping to the water in a terrible state of trauma, uh, the dolphins uh, could sense his body and could see his uh, heart and, uh, you know, and skeleton and, and they could not uh, see what is the language that he speaks, or what is his religion, uh, where he's coming from, or uh, you know which uh, war his ancestors fought against my ancestors. You know it doesn't doesn't matter. They just see a man in trouble. So we uh, learn, try to learn something from them, and you know, and deal with him as a human being. What was the most challenging part? Uh, of the filming? Well, I think the most challenging thing was, at least for me, um, when you're dealing with somebody that experienced something so terrible, um, it's hard to, to rebuild the confidence. Um, he was, you know, he was brutally attacked with no reason. And he told me some sometimes that, you know, that that he doesn't. He, that before this attack, he, he thought that if you do something good, you get something good. And after this attack, he didn't believe it anymore. And then you have to rebuild the confidence with him, to build the confidence with him, and, and it takes time. That's why we shot this film for, for almost four years. We also could not push him to do anything that he doesn't want to do. It was uh, obvious to us, and it was told to us by the psychiatrist that. Uh, we're making this film, um, you know, not only as a cinematic, you know, film, and we don't, we don't, will not, uh, you know, deal only with, with making a film. We're going to also deal with uh, being, part, we're going to be part of, the, of the therapy. Basically, we'll have to make a film that will be also too good for his therapy and not only for the audience. So uh, it took time. It took almost four years, and you have ups and downs. And uh, sometimes Morad doesn't want to speak to you and doesn't want to cooperate. And then you know we would just go diving and um, uh, see the dolphins. And then maybe it would feel better. You can see that some of the interviews that we're making in the film are done in the water right after a dive. So it was. I think that was the most complicated thing to kind of. Um, um, you know, build, build it with him, and give him the time, um, and not push him, uh, and build, and hoping and believing that the, the the end will be good, even though we we didn't have, we could not promise it to ourselves. We didn't know it. And what are you hoping audiences will take away from the film? Uh, you know, everybody see whatever. Um, 
you see is that it connected to it connects to people in, in di from different angles, from different perspectives. Um, we we really hope that we made something honest. You know, um, I always try in my documentary to be honest and to be honest to the story as much as I can and not to push it, you know, not to push myself too much into it. Uh, I think Danny is doing the same. Um, I hope that the audience, uh, you know, will appreciate the amazing power of nature and the amazing power of love. And maybe he, I hope the audience will be inspired by the father that shows uh, non-violence, uh, 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 to, to, to act in a non violent manner. And I hope uh, maybe people will see, the, you know, that, co that coexistence can exist uh, in Israel and in different places in the world. And I hope that people understand how terrible, you know, the violence can be to a human, to a human being and how easy it is to destroy and how hard it, it is to rebuild. And the, and the film open to critical acclaim. Uh, it's playing in New York and L.A. Uh, what are your hopes for the film? Um, I, I really, everything is above my expectations. It's, uh, it's un unbelievable. I mean, we've been showing the film in probably 40 festivals and it was winning prizes. And uh, um, I think uh, about 2 million people watched it already on TVs around the world um, and in Israel it was nominated for the you know Israeli Academy Award it was nominated for cinema for peace it was winning some festivals I don't know it's 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 above my expectations already I just hope that uh, and the most important thing is that Morad is okay you know Morad today is much better than when we started to film him he's studying today hydrotherapy um, which means he's studying how to help other people with the water, healing with the water. And that's exactly what helped him. And now he's trying to help others. Um, he's just doing the, his exams this week. So I wish him good luck. Uh, he's uh, in the north of Israel because this is where the exams. And my mother is from the north with my little brother. So he's staying at my home and he's going so he doesn't have to drive along, along the way. Um, it's really, it's really amazing things happening, and um, for me, you know, to see this amazing Arab population that we have in Israel, Arab, uh, Arab Israeli that, that, that live in Israel, and to become friend of them, to go to their town, to sit with them, um, to have the best food, and just to, to, to open my, my mind and my heart to, to things that I did not I was not open before, so it's, it was just an amazing thing until now, and anything that will come now will be even more amazing. So where can people uh, learn more about your film? Okay, first of all, you can just go to www.dolphinboyfilm.com, and you'll be able to see where the film will be screened, and you'll be also able to buy DVDs. Uh, and uh, to hear about, uh, uh, you know, when we put it on iTunes and VOD and all this. So www.dolphinboyfilm.com. I hope people will enjoy it all over the world. As you can see, Dolphin Boy is a powerful film about love and perseverance. It also taught us the importance of transcending our religious beliefs and background to help those in need. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching.